Hello, this is a note on the uh, use of the split screen function of, uh, of uh, OpenCPN. And here we have uh, our training chart pack loaded of, uh, of uh, there's uh, RNC charts. These, this bar across the bottom is a chart bar. And, um, and then that's a valuable tool. And this shows the uh, raster charts, the purple or blue here, purple are the, are the raster charts. And this is, notice this is of uh, one to 20,000. This one's one to 40,000. This one's one to 80,000. So the scale is, gets larger or more detailed as you go down this way. So the most detailed charts at the end. The green ones are the vector charts. And, and notice these have the regular type of number names that you'd recognize, 18464. These have, uh, these vector charts have a more unusual name. This is a USWA28M. The US means it's American chart. W5 uh, is the scale band. That's in our book on electronic charts. There's four or five bands that describes roughly the, uh, the scale of the chart. WA is the state, and then 28 is the number. M is just a filler. They need to have eight spaces is there. That's the way that works. And so again, though this one and then up here is a, is a uh, smaller scale or 80,000. All right. So what we want to do then is uh, look at the charts. Let's just check here one thing before you, so everybody's on the same page. There's a lot of details to set up when we're looking at the vector charts. But for now, let's just be sure that we've got this set to standard and all the check marks here like this. That's all we need for that. And then we can shut that off. Okay, and so the split screen function, we get to up here in options, uh, display, and then split screen is like this, and then you turn it on apply. Uh, apply or say okay. And now we have a split screen. And it's not, uh, again, I don't know what the algorithm is for what shows up here and what shows up here. One of them is going to stay the same as you were looking at roughly, although we weren't, we hadn't selected either one. But anyway, it's easy to sort out. These are two different displays and it's going to be of the charts that we have. And we can choose, it, and they're really independent in a sense. This one has its menu bar over here. And, you know, uh, this is a, this is a more generic menu bar up here, but and then the same way this one has a menu bar here. So you can set these up to be different ways, and that's one of the things we're going to do. Um, this one, I don't see the raster charts on it for the time being, but uh, we can go in here and then turn on a raster chart uh, here and look at this area. And then, oh, here's here's a... And again, they're not going to show up necessarily the same type of chart or the same scale or the same chart, but we have ways that we can adjust that. So let's start out. Let's just say, for example, I'm going to work in this area here, and I could just right here and move the boat to here. Well, it was right here, but I mean, it could have been in Philadelphia. It doesn't matter. You move the boat here. Now, the beauty of that is this button here, this function here, centers on the boat. So I come over here, and even though this could be this could be off in the middle of nowhere here, it doesn't matter. And then when I click here, it's going to center on the boat. Now it's a different scale, but and that's still a different scale. But you see, it's centered on the boat, and it's two different charts. And that's one of the things we're after. We want to look at. And though this is like one to sixty-nine thousand, these are pretty much the same scale. Um, these numbers are really hard to correlate. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would just say that they look about the same when you're doing that. So one of the functions of using the, um, ah, both of these, look at this. I didn't turn these on. They came on. If you want that, that's up here, show, uh, show depth units. I did not turn that on, so I don't know. That came on by itself. Now, it's nice to know you can turn those on if you have a doubt about it, but uh, generally, we don't need that. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. What are we going to do? So one of, the, one of the functions of this screen that we use in our course on electronic chart navigation is to study the difference between the ENC and the RNC. Now, here you see, obviously, a big difference. But that depends what you see on these. Let me double check that that stayed on standard. It did stay on standard. OK. But the, the thing that's unique about these charts is they have what's called a SCA min, scale minimum. And some things don't show up till you get to a certain zoom level like that. And so um, 
like for example the soundings obviously the, the the minimum scale the soundings must be right about here and there's all sorts of things we can set up that way but uh, so one of the things you can do is compare two charts this way and if we look let's go over here say to this area around here McCurdy head and again if I wanted to get it the same way I would just I would just uh, move the boat to here and then go over here and hit that and you see now I've got them I got it about the same place that's just a good trick all right so this buoy is this buoy and you can you can show different sh designs on this but these are the same buoys and if you want to then but the way Ian see see these these charts over here everything you know about this charted information you're reading right here right here that's not true on these charts on these charts you have to right click it and then say uh, object query and that will bring up the information here it's a it's a conical buoy starboard hand lateral it's red that's the name of it and so forth it's in a restricted area and it'll tell other things it's also telling you that it's it's between two depth contours of this chart between that that value and that value We'll come back to that. For example, if I go in here and right-click this area right here, now I know this 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 depth contour right here has got to be zero, right? That's where the that's where the water that's where the water meets the land when the tide is equal to zero. So this depth contour is zero. So if I right-click here and say object query, see I'm going to have a depth area. Oh, so there must be another contour in there that I'm missing. depth area right click right click object query oh yeah okay so I I don't know where I clicked before maybe I clicked here but anyway you see this is a contour equals 5.9 feet that's probably one fathom on the native chart and then this is zero that's the uh, that's the uh, the, t the tide datum Okay, and then you can do other things here like we want to look at like this rock Okay, what do they have? You see this right here, right click, object query, and what is it? It's a, uh, it's located there. It's a dolphin. It's always dry uh, and so forth. So here we see this symbol, DOL. You don't really know offhand. Maybe that's, I have to double check that. I'm not sure about that, if that means it's always dry or not. But here's one thing, a little bit more interesting. This this symbol here is outside. What th again? This is another subject, but I'm going to come back to it. But this is a safety contour, the one that's highlighted, and we designed that. And we set it up in the chart for each chart. But then, when you have a hazard, an isolated hazard, outside of that, that could potentially have a depth that is shallower than this, then that changes to this isolated danger symbol. And we can right-click that and do object query. And what do you get here? It's an underwater rock or rock awash. And that's telling us something about it. Uh, underwater rock, rock awash. It doesn't say which one is which. Now, in fact, it doesn't say the value of the sounding. Uh, value of the sounding, water level. No, it doesn't give the value of the sounding. You see, so that's sort of an interesting twist because on this chart, we know what the value of the sounding is. This is a plus with four dots. That means that rock is right at the surface, literally right at the surface when the tide height is zero. Okay, so our first exercise, our first exercise, is just surf around on the charts and compare, uh, right click the various objects and, and compare them. And that's one of the functions here. Now, the next thing I want to do is show another, another function of this uh, split screen. And for that, I need to turn on a simulator. Let me just see here. Um, let me, I'm going to turn on a connection here. And that's that simulator. Okay, okay, that's on. Let's see if we get a signal. Yeah, okay, so we have a signal. And then that puts a ship there. Let me center on it. Okay, so that's in the two places. Uh, and this, okay, let's look here at the dashboard. Options, plugins, dashboard, preferences. And then I uh, show this dashboard, okay. And then the preferences show this dashboard. Okay, so, okay. 
Okay, so the simulator looks like it's bringing some wind as well as uh, the uh, vessel. So the vessel's not moving. Uh, the vessel's not moving. And uh, let me come back over here and get, okay. So I'm going to lift up the anchor on that. And so here's where, here's where I'm controlling this. This is using the, the Renvo, uh, Renvo uh, company's eNav simulator. And now let me lift the anchor up and let me get some, let me get some way on here. I'll go up like uh, maybe five or six knots, seven knots, say. Okay, I'm going to move in seven knots. Okay, so I'm moving seven knots. Oh, and now what we have here is uh, this line is the heading line, and that's just set to be one mile long in here. And this one is the COG predictor, and that and you have to and that's set up in the uh, you you go here, you go here, and in the ships, and then here's where you set that up. Uh, and so the, it looks like the heading predictor is one mile long, and this is set at six minutes. So this is where this is where this ship's going to be in six minutes. Notice that there's current here because it's pointed this way, but moving that way. Let's be sure we have the trail going, and then uh, yeah. So this is generating a trail behind it. All right. So now we get down to what's the use of these. Um, let actually, I'm going to crank up the crank up the speed here a little bit and then turn left a little bit. Okay, I'm turning left and I cranked up the speed. Okay, so then the idea here is that you can zoom in. There's my turn. You can zoom in with one of the, with this scale, and now I could be on the same kind of chart. Um, you know, I could be on the same kind of chart or I could be in a different kind of chart. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The idea, here's what the application is in this case. We have one case where we're, uh, where we're navigating up close and we're watching our trail. Because if we had an actual route set along here, we want to see how this trail is following. See, we're definitely not going the way we think we're going. We're, we're heading down this way, but we're actually moving that way. In fact, we, would, we could easily get into trouble here. You think we're looking out the window and we think we're pointed way down here. We could, in fact, go over in here and hit this point if this current changes a little bit. You see, so that's why it's nice to have a zoom in so you can watch your trail to see how the current's changing and so forth. And then the other, on the other view, you just take a little broader perspective of, uh, of where you are in the world, you know, relative to other things. So you can watch this up close. Here you also have the data on your, your, you know, you can watch this data too, but you have a charting, you have this close view, or you're there, or you could be going, you know, as you're going around this point here, you know, some detail around here, you could be watching this and still on the other side, keeping track of where the rest of the world is, you know, and so forth. And then if you have AIS targets, then the far away AIS targets will show up on here and you get early warning. You don't, see, if you're concentrating on just what you're doing here, you could have AIS targets coming up over here that are that you don't know about, and this way you would see them. Okay, so that's all I want to do now. Just show the two roles, the two op, the two applications of the split screen. There are actually other applications, and we'll cover others in, in we'll cover those later in the course.